let's talk about this. This is my Signogis, or maybe it was my Signogis Jumbo Mickey. Or maybe we should say it was, we'll get to that, my Signogis Jumbo Mickey. Seeing as it is Catacetine potting up season, this video might actually be of help to someone to avoid what happened here. I'm going to talk about it. Also gives me an opportunity to honor Michael McCarthy's question suggestion about an update on this orchid because it's been a while since we've seen it last. I touched upon it briefly when I decided to change the setup to maybe rescue this orchid and I put it into the PET method. I have always wanted to try it, but I am a Lekka and self-watering person. Going into organic media simply because I was curious was not something I was prepared to do until it came to the point of my Signoches Jumbo Mickey that had clearly declined exponentially because of some of the mistakes I made. So I'm going to throw it out there that my Lekka and self-watering was not the problem. The setup itself was not the problem. I can vouch for that because of my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. Did super well, recently divided, on its way to starting its new growth of the season. Same with my Catacetine Jack of Diamonds, recently divided. Here we are, new growth of the season on its way. I'm not bringing them out because they are very heavy orchids and I need them to stay where they are until I can get roots into the pot to re-establish and secure themselves in that pot. So they are doing well. It is not the setup itself. It is the person doing the growing and that would be me. So let's get into the Signoches Jumbo Mickey. There's not much to see as you can tell, but I will look into seeing if there's anything left or if I unfortunately can trash this orchid. I don't have any new growth on any of the bulbs, but she grew super, super well for me in Lekka and self-watering. And then in 2021, I made a mistake with regards to overhead watering mist from above had dropped down below onto where this orchid was living on my east side at the time and took out the new growths luckily that was very very early in the season and i knew the orchid would start new growths again because she had so many big juicy bulbs and she did start new growths again and new growths as we know with new roots they shouldn't be watered anytime soon let them get established in the pot before watering really begins. And that is why my first new growths were knocked out because of the overhead dripping of the water coming down onto where this orchid was living because I was misting all the orchids above. So I moved it and everything was going well in the season. But as the second flush of new growths were progressing, my back bulbs started to shrivel a little bit, which is what they normally do because all the new growths are drawing energy out of those back bulbs. However, this was the second flush of new growth this orchid was attempting, so the first flush had already withdrawn some form of energy to get the first flush of growths out. It is now starting with a second flush of growth, and my back bulbs were not shiny and glossy anymore, and seeing as I was in Lekka and self-watering, I put some water into the reservoir just so that the old roots that were still viable in the pot would have some water to absorb so that they could plump the back bulbs up again and then, you know, let my new growths grow on. What I didn't factor in was, because this was a first for me, I had slow release fertilizer in my pots. All my cat and setane used to, keyword, used to have slow release fertilizer in the pot and that slow release fertilizer started to activate because it was warm enough outside and the water coming into contact with the slow release fertilizer. The slow release fertilizer does what slow release fertilizer usually does. However, seeing as the new growths weren't mature enough to draw upon what was in the pot, the older bulbs themselves don't need that fertilizer. They have grown and matured to size. What happened was the slow release fertilizer was not being absorbed and it wicked up to the surface of the pot where all the new roots were growing down into the pot from the new growths that were growing up out of the pot. <laughs> and bingo, I burnt all all the new roots. There was no coming back from that one. I wasn't even able to flush because, you know, once the salt is there, the burn has happened. The rest is pretty much get the orchid out, cut the roots off at the base, 
which I did, and then I thought this is an opportunity for me to try out the PET method to rescue this orchid. Now, I am not saying the PET method isn't working. The orchid hasn't woken up if there's any, any life left in those bulbs. So this is nothing against the PET method. I probably won't even get the opportunity to test this method because I have a feeling that my bulbs are hollow and dead, the ones that you see with all the bracts around them now. The reason I'm saying that is because, <clears throat> first of all, look where that tie was and it's really, really loose now. In squeezing this bulb here, it is all hollow. So that brings me to the conclusion, I waited to film this to see if I squeeze the next bulb, is it also hollow? Eh, it feels firm. So what we're going to do is check the status of that bulb because if there is nothing going to grow from this bulb, I don't need to baby these and keep them in a position where they should be starting to grow. Ooh, we have some green. <gasps> there is still hope, people. So what we're going to do is remove all the bracts because these are tough bracts. They're tougher than anything I've seen on this orchid since I've owned her. So we'll give her some more light so that she can wake up. You can see the back bulbs are all shriveled. Now, it is normal that older bulbs on Cygnoches will shrivel up more so than other Catacetinae. But what I did, the mistake I made, had nothing to do with the natural evolution and growth habit of this orchid. My mistake was from jump, check this out, that slow release fertilizer and me prematurely watering the orchid and activating what was in the pot. Needless to say, just learned my lesson with Cygnoches here. I have not added any slow release fertilizer into my two other Jumbo Mickeys and look what we've just found. Oh my goodness, are you giving me a second chance? Hey, we may be able to get PET into Ninja Orchids. <laughs> right, that gives me hope. I now dare to touch this bulb here. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. Let's peel this back. It is firm. It looks green at the bottom. You guys, I was actually going to say, you know what? It's a learning lesson. And I hope that this helps someone because I don't want you to have to deal with my mistakes. I always said as far as parenting was concerned, to my children, I always said, look, I made mistakes in my life. There has to be a reason and a purpose for my mistakes. And the reason and purpose for my mistakes is to tell you all about it so that you don't have to do them and repeat them and go through trying to correct them, etc., or the troubles that follow. So the same with this video. Despite the fact we have life here, <laughs> please, I hope that this video is of help. I would highly recommend if you are in LECA and self-watering or any kind of inorganic media and doing this self-watering, you're not repotting your catacetinae year in, year out. Do not add slow release fertilizer into your pots for the eventuality that you may need to water prematurely to keep your back structures from shriveling up too much. You see the beauty of LECA or any inorganic media when it comes to not repotting the orchid is that you're keeping the roots viable year in, year out. And then you can intervene when it comes to not having the back bulbs shrivel up. Now, I don't see a new growth on this one. Oh, but it's green. I have set this orchid back to almost zero but i still have an orchid i cannot believe it this one being hollow completely freaked me out i wonder and i think i might just dare cut that piece away shall we <laughs> i mean it doesn't look nice that's one thing but if this one grows its growth out here then it will want space there we go. I'm gonna leave the back bulbs on. Oh, I can't believe it. 
this is amazing. Happy days. I was really, really thinking I was going to be binning this orchid. But yeah, do not put slow release fertilizer into your self watering setup growing in inorganic media. Leave your orchid be, but make sure that you then supplement all the necessary fertilizer when it comes into active growth and it is time to water and fertilize. Do that with your regular fertilizer because if you have to intervene, you do not want to activate the slow release fertilizer. That is coming from the perspective of someone who has grown catacetinae for many, many years. And it doesn't mean that this is a rookie error and has no bearing on the fact that I was overconfident. This was just the mistake of overhead watering, getting into my first flush of new growths, weakening this orchid from jump because she had to do it again. And then I started to put in some water to help the back bulbs. Well, here we are, PET method. I still have the opportunity to test this out. I'm really, really happy. So I hope that I didn't go off on any tangents and lose my train of thought. If you feel as though I did and I didn't circle back around and complete that thought, please let me know in the comments. Other than that, here we are, sick no cheese, Jumbo Mickey. I get to do this right and I really, really look forward to doing the PET method. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. Have yourselves a very beautiful day. One condition, as always though, please stay safe. Take care, bye.